All right, guys, what is up? We're live for episode number 92 of the Before the Trainwreck series, coming up on that big number 100. I'm joined today with doctor, economist, PhD extraordinaire, Aaron Cleary. What's up, brother? I, did I get a PhD? Did you promote me recently? Uh, I promoted I you because I think that you deserve yeah. one with with all of the books that you've put out that should it be selling a lot we, more. Right, right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Aaron, Aaron's going to be on for a bit today. He's a little bit under the weather. So we're going to, so we're going to try to get, a, you know, a good half hour, 45 minutes out of him. And then what I'll do is I'll switch to taking call-ins from you guys and I'll let him go. Cause maybe he's got the Rona. I don't know. Are you feeling sick today or like what's going I, on? There? No, it's, it's, I, I got 12 hours sleep and I thought I was going to be good and just something's not right. So 12 hours like, sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I How do you sleep twelve hours, man. I haven't done that. In I, a I don't of normally. Years. I don't know. I I um uh, I don't know. It's just something. It, it you know when your body tells you like something's wrong. That's what I'm getting from yeah. my body, and it's okay. like yeah, I don't normally sleep twelve hours, and I I think I'm coming down with something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it easy today and and All chill right. out and relax. Well, you can tap out a little earlier then. Um, I'm gonna drop the link here to. The YouTube's. Um, if you guys are watching this on Facebook or Twitter or wherever, just do me a solid. Come, come, click that and come watch it over on YouTube. It just helps me out with the algorithms, and um, give that like button a big fat smash. So, Aaron, um, how many books have you put out? Because this is, I don't know, what is this like the tenth or something? Yeah, it's around there. Um, I have like maybe eight or nine real legit books, and then I have um, some books that was just a compendium or a compilation of my best blog posts. Mm. I don't consider those books. There's three of those out there. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, a, we're coming up on 10. Yeah. If not 10, it's nine or eight. Yeah. Cool. So, um, what was the motivation behind the book of numbers? Uh, it was economics. And, uh, <clears throat> I know you honorarily gave me my PhD in economics. I appreciate that from Ryerson university. You're welcome. Uh, but yeah, the main thing was economics where, um, if you look at it, uh, the vast majority of current and historical economic production and innovation and creation was by men. And I had a very simple question like, well, if we take away the number one thing that incentivizes men to work, which would be pretty attractive women, mm. what would be the economic ramifications? And furthermore, and more specifically on the individual level, is uh, men spend the majority of their time, energy, and resources. It's the ultimate economic question. They pursue it chasing women. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I said, okay, given today, uh, the environment and women's interest in marriage or children and all that other stuff, not to mention some uh, statistics about you know how successful the average man can expect to be, is men essentially spending their entire lives worth the pursuit of women? Like, mm -hmm. you know, is this, is this, so I, I did the, first cost benefit analysis on the pursuit of women. And that's, that's what I wanted to do. And the ramifications are huge. And, uh, you know, everyone's like kind of tongue in cheek. You're like, Oh, look, he did a ROI on women. How cute is that? I'm like, no, nah, there's, there's some larger global. I do mean global economic consequences that if frankly, women are fat, uh, mean, disagreeable, uh, you are tanking. You're, you're pouring like, sugar or salt into the, the the gas tank of the economic engine of the world and men are just not going to produce as much as they would have had they been guaranteed through societal norms and convention you know, a wife and children mm -hmm. and so um that that was the larger economic and, and right now as, as i think everybody knows it's kind of a an interesting wow how edgy and i like no there's some there's some consequences where if all of a sudden you know, what accounted for 90% of real GDP, and I will say this, I'll, I'll state this, nearly 100% of all technological innovation, men, what happens if they shut down? You know, if they have no incentive and they they decide to like, yeah, I'll just stay at home or I'll be a neat or something like that. So that is what, that's what uh, prompted me to write this book is it's an economic analysis that it's also a, a question I pose to men like, hey, is this worth your time? Mm-hmm. Long story short, it really isn't, though. <laughs> yeah, yes. We don't have to read through it. Right. Yeah, there we go. And good well, night, everybody. Good well, night. Yeah, I mean, like, I think we already have the answer to this. I mean, it's 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 not the best use of a man's time to 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 throw a lot of time, effort, money, and resources. But 
the book itself breaks down why and the underlying notion behind that. It's like the foundation of all of that. So you can get the mechanics of it. I think men, generally speaking, are more rational, deductive, logical problem solvers. So the book of numbers deals with all the elements that lead up to it's really not a good use of your time if you throw a lot of time, effort, and resources at this, right? Right. And I, I think everybody knows. I mean, we kind of like, ha, 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 it's a negative. And everyone says, what's the ROI? Is it even positive? And, and so I think we all understand that. But also what I wanted to achieve with this book was doing a, a breakdown of the statistical analyses. And like, look, here are some hard numbers. And some of them are within an error of range. I'm not saying these are like, you know, precise to it's a social science so there, there's always room for error but i think uh two things one to give men both old and young like some numbers like look if you're going to go and gamble in this house here are your statistics here are your odds and the other thing uh for guys like you me you know old timers terrence pop who've gone through hell to look at it and say is this is there something wrong with me did i do something wrong and i'd like to you know put this out there that book saying no it ain't there unless you're like a jerk or there's something wrong with you actually generally wrong with you but for most men no it's not your fault and so it's to deliver a bit of sanity uh to men out there who have gone through hell who have, have gone through the you know trials and tribulations of dating western women in general mm -hmm. uh, to say like look no it, it the, the numbers are on your side and it doesn't solve the problem i mean June cleavers are not going to be mass produced anytime soon, but at least, you know, it wasn't your fault. And so uh, there's an element of forgiveness that I like uh, to, to promote that book with. Yeah, there's um, I mean, you went through my book and I and I collected some data on um, the success rates of long term relationships and marriages. And one of the things I, I came across in a study uh, was I think it was something like three percent of couples after eight years are living in a state of like bliss or obsession right. for one another. And I believe that the uh, data was something like 12 or 13 percent, something like about 12 and a half percent. Um, we're still living in a state of love for one another. The rest right. of them weren't. Right. It's, 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 it's just not like that old fairy tale that you think that you're going to sign up for when you're watching Disney and Gilligan's Island when they're all fawning over the girls and all that stuff. It, it's that's not the reality of the world in the way that things usually pan out. I mean, you can have a good experience, but you need all of these things to fall in place to make that happen. The way that you wrote the book, though, I noticed that when you kind of put it together, you were talking about this from the perspective of the average Joe. Why did you why did you bring it down to the average Joe level? Like, why did it have to be like the average guy? Because because of uh, applicability. Um, I know you, me, other people that tune in were probably on the right side of the bill distribution curve. But uh, I wanted to be applicable to your average American Western male. Uh, the other what does problem, that avatar look like? Is that like a guy that works a nine to five job? Um, yeah, Ryan know. Stone. You know Ryan Stone. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, like a Ryan Stone kind of guy. All right. <laughs> no, no, Ryan. I'm I'm just busting his balls. No, you're and and it's to be. Uh, you bring up a good point because no, the average guy is not us. Not to not to swing my dick around, but frankly, no, the average guy is not me. It's not you. This is to be the average guy, so it'd be very applicable. The other problem that I ran into, Richard, was like to run scenarios and run statistics, I had to say, like, okay, we need a, a, a subject. We need a, a, a test subject. And so I'm going to run with average Joe 5. And so all, the, not all, but, but a lot of these statistical analyses were done like, okay, here's this guy. He's an average looking guy, average income. What does the average man look to get? Now, interestingly enough, I do have the model. I could tweak it like, okay, let's say you're a nine or let's say you have this type of income. Uh, I haven't programmed height into it because frankly, it's intangible to, to program into it. Uh, but that, that was the reason why I focused on the average. Another example is a lot of people would say, I define success as happily married. Well, a lot of guys don't want to get married, but that has been the traditional uh, metric by which we would consider success. So there were, in order to do some analyses and crunch some real numbers, I had to make some assumptions that would not apply to everyone. Uh, but it was the average guy looking to get married and be happily married till death do him part. And I know that's idealistic and it's not the entire case, but I thought that would be the most applicable and universal and relatable uh, when I did that analysis. Mm. 
did you did you come across any surprises yourself when you're writing this book like anything that kind of blew you away when you're putting it all together it not really because i'm jaded and i'm cynical and i don't have a heart but it was it was worse than i thought it would be i mean and i even went to my actuary cuz if you didn't know i had an actuary to like calculate my figures and double check my math and like do some uh, especially with the cross correlation between different traits and all that um i would go to him like did i did i miss a decimal point mm-hmm. like it is it, and it, it that's what was it was it was worse than i thought uh but it just reconfirmed everything i experienced like for example um there are three guys out there now who have done uh uh, kind of like a tree node uh, where they've done online dating. And um, I, I forget, you know, the, the three different uh, uh, analyses were done. And it was something like, okay, 10,000 swipes uh, right. Mm-hmm. And then how many got matches? And it immediately goes to less than 10%. And then out of the 10% that matched, uh, what percent uh, responded back and what percent that, the, and it, and out of, I think it was 16,000, a guy had three in-person dates. And oh, that was, that was the guy that um, did that infographic. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he's not okay. the only one. There's, there's three of them out there and, and this, the dad I had at the point in time, and I'm sure somebody would, uh, there's other men out there who are probably doing the same thing, but there were three guys. One in particular, I think was a statistician and he, he kept pretty good numbers as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was that was what was shocking to me, where you're swiping all the time uh, on online dating, and out of sixteen thousand, you get three dates. And, and Lord knows that's not going to lead to anything else. You know, it's not going to be your wife or anything. Um, and then also uh, related to that, another thing that I was shocked with is uh, the average man. Do you know what the average man spends on uh, uh, online dating? Time wise, per day. A, a, a time per day. Yeah, oh, I'm going to say a couple hours a day, probably 90 minutes a day, 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, you got other things to do, guys. You, you, I mean, and, and for such a low rate of return, mm. uh, where, where it's nothing, it's like you, you might as well. I mean, you know, Troy Francis go out and meet these girls in public. Um, so that was another shocking thing. Is like, where does that data come from? Was that something that Tinder published or Bumble or something? No, it was, it was a a news article. So Lord knows what the methodology was. It's the data we have. So if, uh, if, uh, we get better data, I can do it, but they estimated men are spending like 85 minutes and women are spending 90 minutes a day on online dating. Of course, women are pursuing that for, uh, validation and, and ego feeding, but, Men are wasting. I cannot emphasize that. You are wasting an hour and a half a day, 10% of your waking hours uh, trying to do online dating. It's just, it's, it's pointless. It's useless. Yeah. And, you know, your typical reward is going to be somebody that looks nothing like their pictures, usually 10 to 20% heavier than their pictures. Right. <laughs> and quite unpleasant often <laughs> with a feminist degree. Um, that's probably going to hate the patriarchy. Right. Right. And I I don't know about you, but I got some younger buddies and maybe not so younger buddies, but they're still out there dating and they're, you know, and I didn't believe it. Like it can't be that bad. And then also my buddy Dre or, uh, Fred or my buddy, Chad, uh, Elkins, they'll send me these dating profiles of these gals. Mm -hmm. And I know they're, I know this is not your average dating profile, but the fact these profiles exist and in such numbers, that are so delusional, like mother of three swipe mm. left. If you have a pro- like, I, even the ones like it's been more than one where a uh, baby on the way. It's like, Oh yeah. What, what, what really? Yeah. If you and follow I, me on Twitter, you'll see them. I mean, Oh yeah. Yeah. No, you post them. Yeah. yeah people yeah. send them, send them to me all the time. And, and like, I only post about 10% of them. Like I get a lot, mm. <laughs> like there's a lot coming through. So those are just the ones that, that people send to me. It, it's, I mean, you're you're not picking from the best of the best anymore. This is, uh, I mean, you know, the flip side of the token. There's a lot of weak, weak ass beta men too that 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 you know really aren't spoiled for choice either. Right. Well, and I always try to have like this intellectual honesty about me, and like, okay, look, the internet is a very fine net, and we can drudge. You know, this was always there's always crazy people out there, and you say, all right, is it just because the internet now catches these crazy ladies? But then to you know again, as a social scientist of, of sorts, should we be seeing like a bunch of June cleavers then of the equal amounts? Like, okay, if we're going to go bell distribution off to the left of 
degenerate, worthless pieces of crap where it's like uh, mom to be, child on the way, uh, student loan debt, tattoos, nose piercing and all that other stuff. Well, should there be like, you know, a, a svelte, nice, good uh, Christian girl or Amish girl and looking to, you know, engineering major or something like that. And there is not that uh, commensurate uh, uh, high quality women as well. So, you know, again, it's a very fine net and you like, oh, is it, you know, I think we're just pulling up the worst that obviously we would, we would say, look at this crazy, you know, like that's going to go to the forefront. But the lack of quality women uh, as an a counter or an opposite to all these bad ones is an indication to me and like how bad things are uh, mm. that, that we, for, I don't know, show me a, a girl who's like, Hey, I love guns and I love Jesus. And uh, by the way, I drink whiskey, you know, like I, I haven't seen that dating profile yet. Uh, but by gosh, there's hundreds, if not thousands of literally mother expecting mother to be, by the way, six feet tall, da, 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 ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. it's like, wow. So it's very telling, and and the numbers I have in my book are kind of bearing that out. Yeah, um, I'm sorry we don't have better news for you tonight, guys. But uh, the book of numbers analyzes it in such a a, a way that you just can't ignore it. Um, who who is this book made for? And you know, it's available on Amazon. You've got it as a print, Kindle, and Audible now as well, too, right? Correct. Yeah. Who is this book for? Like. Who should be reading this? And by the way, guys, the link for this is uh, pinned in the um, Amazon bookstore and all my videos. So even if you don't click through on this video after I'm done with it, um, it's there. It's 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 one of my recommended reads for sure. It's it's basically for two groups of men. Uh, and wait, I mean, women I mean, can always read my stuff. I just I'd rather just bang my head against the wall because they're not going to listen. Uh, no, it's it's sad. It's true, but women don't want to listen to what I have to say. So it's like, okay, so it's for men. Don't worry, they There's, don't listen to me either. Yeah. Um. So the the one group, and ideally, this is who it gets to, is to younger men, and by younger, I mean under twenty. Before you commit uh, to a woman, or before you even get vested or emotionally like, oh, I gotta find a girl. Like, and I know all your genetics and biology is screaming at you. Mm -hmm. to go and, and, and find a girl and fall in love and have, I, I get that. All right. But this is a sober awakening. It literally is a slap across the face for younger men. Like, look, here are the numbers. And I think men are a little bit more receptive to hard financial or uh, statistical numbers. Uh, so that is who it's for. It's like, look, before you go uh, and you start getting some gray hair down here, uh, save yourself the fret uh, energy, even in your book, you said, you know, uh, a fox is a unit of currency. Like before you give a fuck, uh, or concern or care or money or resources or time, anything, please read this book. So you know what you're going into. The other, uh, group of men, uh, would be for, uh, men who have gone through hell. Uh, and I think that's nearly every man, uh, because the, the dating, uh, experience has not been acceptable. It's not acceptable at all. It's, it's, un I, I'd like to say that's my opinion, but no, it's, it's not fun. It's, uh, I would even say traumatic. I think some men are, are suffering from that. And then mm -hmm. you're like, what did I do wrong? What is wrong with me? And if you look at the numbers here, you're going to realize, wow, there's nothing wrong with me. Uh, it, it, I was, it was this much of a lopsided Herculean uphill battle for me to even try in the first place. So it's, <clears throat> it's not a, a like a, an excuse. Like you still have to work and put forth your energy and effort. But the second group of men would be those of you obviously divorced, obviously those of you who are like frustrated and tired and beat. Um, we are just about to throw in the towel. Uh, read this book and then it, it won't solve the problem. It ain't going to make every girl a thin, redheaded, uh, big boobied, long haired girl who all major in chemical engineering. But it will. for redheads, don't you? I love redheads. Is there, is there, is there any other? What? Why? What's wrong? What's wrong? I, I'm just not a fan of redheads. Like, I'll take really? blondes, blondes, brunettes. Redheads, you can have them, Cap. Right. I'm not discriminatory. I mean, if good looking blonde shows up, it's just, you know, if you want to kick a redhead out no, of your just, bed, Richard, I've just, just heard you say, head. you know, redhead a few times mm -hmm. now, you know, like well, not even in just this cast. I'm, I'm sorry. You don't that. have an appreciation. That's all right. I'll, no, I'll, that's okay. You can have the sloppy seconds. It's all right. <laughs> I'll set them your way. Um, so you said earlier that um, 
it, it's it's unacceptable. So what would make dating acceptable in your view? Or uh, women I, I, today? Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a long laundry list. But frankly, if women honored their word, uh, if they started act, acting like equals. I think the biggest uh, thing I have against uh, my dating experiences in the past and what I've witnessed with my uh, my clients is women saying, I will show up, and then they don't. I think the flaking and the lying, I think that is that would be the biggest improvement women could do. Or if they don't want to go out with the guy, just say you, you don't want to go out with the guy and you're not interested. Um, I think women reaching for their effing wallets would be a nice little you know, treat. Um, and, and that did happen. I don't know, maybe back in your day in the nineties, there was, I have to give my hat and tip my hat to the Gen X gals because they would reach for their wallet occasionally. And, and they, they did make an effort. Uh, but then uh, towards the later years of my, uh, my dating career, um, man, you, you might as well have gotten suppliers to pull teeth to get these girls to, to reach for their wallet. Um, and then also just, uh, it, it sounds idealistic, but can you girls conversate? Can you, I mean, like if you're just going to be an NPC and sit there and wait for the man to entertain, like, I don't know how many dates you went through where you were like trying to entertain and trying to be funny and witty <clears throat> only because you didn't know any better and you should have just ended the date. But I think, uh, you know, the guy is also a separate sentient entity. And maybe if you'd like to go on the date, you girls could bring more to the table than just sitting there and like, amuse me. Uh, <laughs> and for God's sake, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a long shot, but maybe you girls are educated about current events or you have an opinion or you know a little bit about philosophy so that the guy can, you're, you're not just this, uh, I've literally had like, hang on. I got a, I think this is a tricer. No, not, uh, what is it? a raptor? This is a raptor's tooth. A friend of mine, a fan, sent me the raptor's tooth of a dinosaur. I've had more interesting conversations with this raptor tooth than I have most of the girls I dated because the raptor tooth is actually interesting and has a history. And uh, the girls that when you know a guy takes all the effort and energy, takes on all the risk, takes on you know goes up, asks the girls out, faces rejection, which is should be par for the course, and then you say yes, and then you just show up. You don't bring anything to the table. Uh, it's like yeah, that. That so I I'd like women to talk. You uh, don't want to hear about their social justice causes or their modeling career on Instagram. Well, thankfully, I haven't dated uh, that <laughs> recently. So I, I, Lord knows, but I do remember in the olden days where there were times and I should have, I should have just like picked the girl up, ba da ba da ba, and even before I made the right turn onto the highway, so like. Okay, you're just gonna sit here and, and suck away my time. I should turn around, dropped her back off. And and mm. that would be uh something ideal. But you and you know, we might as well be asking for platinum bars to be falling out of the sky by that point. Yeah, um I can't disagree with a lot of that. It's it's you know, it's tough to. I mean, I you know, the only thing that I would challenge on that a little bit would probably be like the expectation that you're expecting to have a deep, interesting conversation. I mean, you're not going to discuss solving cold fusion or something like that when you're out on a date with a chick. It's just not going to happen. But um, I was talking to somebody about that earlier today, actually. Um, I had a bunch of super chats here. Let me just kind of rip through these. How are you feeling, by the way? Because I know that you said that you didn't think- I'm All right, I'm good. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit better now that we're going. It just, it's weird. It's like the internet feeds my soul. It, fe like it feeds the anger. Yeah, but a I, like, dude, I'm gonna like angry this. Cappy is always the best Cappy. I hey, I I wish I could get angry. I don't have the energy to be angry. Right I don't know. Let's see if we can piss you off tonight. So Aaron, so Aaron uses data to excuse his racism and misogyny. Yeah, that, is this a friend of yours? Fun. Yeah, it's a friend of mine. Unfortunately, it's a charitable affirmative action friend. You know, nobody likes Juan, uh, but no, he's he you you'd like him uh, if you follow him on Instagram. He's in San Francisco and he takes pictures of all the. It, it's sad actually, uh, but he basically has a photo journal where he'll take pictures of homeless people and people defecating in the streets. And oh, it's really, yeah, it's, it's really sad and tragic, but no, Juan's a good dad. Uh, he's got some kids. He takes them out hiking. He uh, spends time with his children and uh, his psycho ex is no longer part of the family, but yeah, Juan's a good guy. He, he a mechanic too. He's, he's, but he's, he's straight up aces. 
uh super chat there no comment thank you for that uh steve says love this guy sounds like i have a new book to read thanks rich yeah definitely read it steve i think you'll like it it's it's a it's a nice accompaniment to uh the unplugged alpha um aaron was talking about this with me um a few weeks ago actually but uh his is about the analyzing mine is mine's really just like a dive into the red pill to show you as much as possible in 200 pages yours is execution as well i'd say i mean it not to say you didn't have a philosophical aspect but it's it, it's a hell of a book it's very instructional thank you uh ben says cappy looking for a bailout from rich <laughs> another one of your friends yeah no i i, I friends like this who needs pedophiles um <laughs> yeah he's another buddy there's a because i'm trying to get my sales up this month so i get a payout so that when my house goes to final financing, I can have the lowest mortgage possible. I can bring a lot of cash in and uh, charitably and kindly with lots of insults and, and daggers. My fans, my readership, my followers are all very charitably, kindly donating money to me and they're buying my books. But uh, now they're all saying that I need a bailout and I'm a real banker now. And I, <laughs> I've, I've made it very clear it's to buy my books and I, I will take your free money. But uh, no, there's no real cappy bailout. The, the the um you know the sequence of books that you've put out like one of my favorites is still the the bachelor pad you know the mm -hmm. bachelor pad economics book it's uh i don't know who recommended it to me but i was but i was just kind of getting started on this a number of years ago and somebody said you know you got to read this book and i read it and i didn't have any inclination before to do like a book review or talk about a book or an author and then i did and then somebody said hey cappy mentioned you the other day in his video i didn't even know you had a youtube channel and then that's how we connected. But I thought that that was another another great book as well. So I, I remember when someone said, because I was in Tucson, Arizona, one of my favorite hikes, Sabino Canyon in Tucson, Arizona. And it was like three, four years ago, I think. Uh, yeah. You probably reviewed it. Before. And yeah. And someone said, hey, uh, you know, Rich Cooper. I'm like, who's this Rich Cooper guy? And you did the review. And I remember because I was about to go hike up the canyon. I saw it on, on my phone. I'm like, oh, hey, who's this guy? Oh, he's pretty cool. But yeah, no, I do remember that. That was that was really nice when you did that. Yeah. Uh, that's what happens when Top Gun ain't pissed off. Man, I had Mike. sun. I had my sunglasses on when I was on with Rolo, uh, because I had my eyes dilated because I had a, an eye exam, mm. and everyone was calling me Top Gun and uh, Tom Cruise and all aviators. That, aviators, yeah. Uh, Rich, would you live in the East and get married? Um, I don't see any reason to get married ever again. It's it's kind of a dumb idea, especially if you've been through the grinder once. I mean, there's nothing in it for you. You can get involved with women. I just don't see the point in marriage. Um, living in the East, sure. It's better than living here. I mean, I've never lived in the East, you know, full disclosure, but it sure as hell looks better than living in the West. What's, um, uh, what's the temperature up there right now? Because we're like minus four uh, Fahrenheit. What do you guys? Minus fucking 12 or so yeah, celsius yeah. it's cold as balls i went out for a walk today it was it was cold yeah, yeah um do you think that 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 this book of numbers changes at all in different parts of the world like if you have somebody read this in i don't know uh, eastern european country or saudi arabia or australia yeah it, well i would say to apply uh to western culture in general it is u.s data so i will provide that caveat uh but i think it would be applicable to any Anglosphere, first world, Western nation, um, it would probably start to lose its efficacy if we went to Eastern Oriental uh, nations, Japan, even if it's first world, uh, because I do believe a lot of this is cultural. So, um, yeah, it, it would, you know, if you're in Zimbabwe, this would not apply to you. If you're in the Philippines, this would not apply to you. But uh, for most of the listening audience, uh, I, I, it, it would apply to first world Western nations. In your view, what's a better use of a man's time rather than chasing women? Oh, Christ. I, anything? <laughs> I, I, um, like are we talking I, anything like watching grass grow or maybe molasses falling? Well, on a yeah, day? I mean, I, I, I hate, you know, and it's like, not that, that I'm, bad? I, it's that bad. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember it. I, I went through it. Um, there's obviously a huge opportunity costs and, and you go through it in your book. And I, I summarize it to the same conclusion last chapter of my book. And that is, you know, pursue yourself, your skills, your, your trades, uh, get the value of an hour of your labor up. Um, I would also say there's intellectual pursuits, uh, downloading podcasts, studying on your own hobbies, riding motorcycles, um, 
you know, spending time with your friends, mm. uh, you know, spending time with your family. You know, my, my folks are still alive and I'm kind of like, I ought to spend more time with my mom, and my dad before they pass away. My grandma is still alive, 94 years old. God bless her. And, and I would love to spend time with her, but you know, Corona thing and all that. There's just so much more. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, you and I are in our forties and, I, but to any younger guy listening, I mean, all you have to do is ask yourself this question. All right, look, was all this time and effort and energy worth investing in women, worrying, asking out, fretting, crying, all that? It, it, was that worth it? And it, it's, it, you know, if anything, I'm kicking myself in the shins. Like, how did I waste so much time or concern even? Forget money or time, just concern or worry uh, about gals. And I'm not, I'm not saying go MGTOW or anything like that, but you're going to die and there is a lot of other stuff you ought to be doing. And so working out. I love hiking, motorcycle, whatever your, your thing is now, you know, he's jerking off the porn and playing video games. I guess, I guess it's a higher rate of return. Cause you're not going to be tortured. Uh, I, <laughs> I guess you're not going to get divorced and have half your assets. So sadly, that's how low a hurdle it is right now is girls can't even be porn or video games or, or, or Coke or, or Cheetos. <laughs> Um, but all the guys that are all about semen retention now are all freaking out. Ah, he said, go jerk off. <laughs> but I, well, and, and it's sad because I had look, these guys last night on a, on an AMA that, you know, that I did on, uh, Instagram, this guy's going, what do you think of no fap and no, and semen retention? And I, and I just keep going back to show me five, 10 successful men that have put a dent in the universe that have bragged incessantly about semen retention and not Fapper, fapping right right uh Show me. yeah i know. I, I know but says it may sound fapping at least you got a rate of return out of that I yeah. mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> there's an roi on that you know the the girl on the internet uh you're jerking off to doesn't sue you for half your assets and enslave <laughs> you for alum i'm i'm, I'm sad it, yeah. I, I wish i i wish i was even being uh, tongue in cheek i can't because no, it's just such a, such a huge risk yeah yeah so. you know guys like guys like Terren, terrence pop have have some interesting stories about about mm -hmm. stuff in, in life and you know some people get get a little offended and, and bent out of shape but hey you know that's the experience that he had uh there's a guy here asking about your book on book repository i don't know what that is is it available there or uh, I, I, why don't you just buy know. it on amazon well, a lot of people uh, overseas, if you're not in the United States or like, you know, oh, I, uh, I have a solution for you. Uh, yeah. There's a site called Book Depository, okay. not repository, but Book okay. Depository that you should be able to get the book on. Mine's available anywhere in the world on Book Depository. So I don't know if that's what he means, but it should show up there pretty soon. Yeah, I think uh, Jorge is probably, yeah, it, it, that may be because he's probably in a, um, I, I presume, South American country or a Latino country, and maybe they don't have the uh, the distribution there. But um, um, it's the not Amazon an audio book, again. so yeah, I yeah. mean, if, if you want, you can get audio. That should, that should work. Do you, do you sell your books on your website too, or are you just sell them through Amazon? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I got a, I got, why well, link to it, uh, okay. links to Amazon. No, I mean, yeah, like, can they just buy it, you know, directly from you or anything like that? No, no, yeah. I, I just, I, I didn't have time to set that up. Like, uh, uh, Vox day, he, he, uh, with his Castilla publishing, and there's a lot of guys who do do that, uh, where they publish their own books and you could sell it and they keep the percentage. I just, I just don't have the time. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I want to bang them out, get them out, ship. Out. And you know what? I know everyone doesn't like Amazon or anything, but at least they're they deliver. You know, they're they're a good platform. They've worked with me so far for the past ten years. Yeah, I got another super here from Classified Chap. He says, "Rich and Aaron are the best red pill content creators of all time." Thank you for the insights. Well, thank we you. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. This is a true, true story. Yes, uh, but his anger is familiar, encouraging to do better. That's Mexi Mike. You can ignore him. He's another Latino guy. You don't another friend of yours. Okay. Yeah, uh, hey, Rich, my name is Raf. You never say the name. Raf. There you go. I said it for you. How's that? Okay. All right. no. um, there's one other question here. No, that was a book repository one. Um, I'm going to get uh, the link to call in because uh, Aaron's not going to stay for the, sh uh, for the show. I mean, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. I'll, stick, hey, I'll stick around. I, I just, it's, I think as long as I'm sitting still and not doing anything, I'll I'll be all right. So I can stick around for it. Okay, so so I'll put the call in link here. Um, if you if you have a question, preferably on tonight's topic, but any question, um, you know, young, old, man, woman, 
bring anything to the table. Just make sure you got a good connection. Uh, use use headphones just so you got decent audio. I mean, these things have built-in microphones in them, so that's it's always helpful. Um, so you can click that and uh, come on, come on and join us and ask a question if you want. Uh, here's a super here from one of my community guys. Jerry says five dollars super chat minimum here, guys. That is right. Minimum. Is it five dollar minimum? I don't know. You can you can throw oh, whatever you want. By the way, guys, um, if you're if you're a channel member or if you've just joined the channel membership, um, I figured out how to create my recurring Zoom link finally. So um, on the community tab of my channel, I do uh, Zoom Q and A's every other Monday for my uh, community group. So I'm I'm posting the same link for people on the tier two and higher. Um, so it's open for Q and A. You can join us on the Zoom uh, show after this and ask whatever question you want. It's you know it's fully open. It's a private show. It's not public on the YouTube's. Um, what else? Thanks, Aaron. Just finished Worthless. I heard that was a good book. I haven't read that yet. Yeah, it's it's for younger people. Um, I don't I don't know if you need it unless you're planning to go to college. But uh, nope. it, it was just warning. I don't know if you knew this, there was this education bubble and people were majoring in dumb crap and going into a lot of debt for it. But mm. uh, that was the book written 10 years ago, uh, warning people about worthless degrees. So it makes a good gift to a younger nephew or niece or somebody who's like, you know, in, in high school and you want to make sure they don't ruin their life financially by majoring in the wrong crap. That's a that's a book they can get. Let me ask you a question. So if the ROI is so low and it's not really a good use of a man's time, um, I mean, I always tell guys in their twenties, I, I always have guys call in on the, on these shows or ask questions and they're younger and they're like, I've got a girlfriend or I'm living with a girl that's four years older than I am. And I'm 24 and it's like, Oh fuck, here we go. Why aren't you listening to me? Um, I always tell guys don't get into long-term really long-term monogamous live with a chick type of relationships in their twenties. Like what's your view on that? Like, is there a time where they might want to consider chasing some women maybe in their 30s and their 40s what it's not an issue of chasing it's whether the right one comes along yeah it, it's whether the right one comes along and where you are in your life um the girl i've been with now uh i, I threw in the towel uh i was dating several girls at the time my my current girlfriend included and um it's just this one gal who like eh, maybe you know and and just uh you know, ghosted me and uh, didn't see her for like two weeks. And then all of a sudden she's banging at my door at 3 a.m. because her friend found out that I wasn't going to like pursue that. Mm -hmm. And she was banging her ex-boyfriend. It, 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 the point is uh, she's banging at my door. You know, I, I'm yelling at her. It's late at night. And uh, she, you know, like, well, I'm never going to, you know, you're, I knew you were a player and da, 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 da. And this is a girl who's like banging some other guy. I'm like, well, don't worry about it. I never want to sleep with you again. And she punches me. And I'm like, why am I doing this? And then I had, I had the girlfriend I got now who was nice. Uh, you know, uh, not, not drop dead gorgeous, but good looking enough. Mm -hmm. And she has a career. Uh, has her act together and show she would show up on time and she would make food. And I think after Men a while, hard to please, are we feed us and F us? Oh my, right? Well, and that was another thing. This gal's like, you just like that. She, she, she knew how I was. Cause I was, I was a whore, Richard. I was dating her. I was like, uh, you just okay. like that girl because she cooks for you and treats you nice. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. What's the problem, right? Give it a try well, sometime, sweetheart. Yeah. But inevitably I, I just, you run on energy and um if you got the right gal there at that point in time it's like cool you know just uh but i hate to say it but uh, she's not the number one thing in my life i mean i guess my life is my own life and that's the number one thing but it, it, it was kind of a like i'm gonna go this way do you want to come with um she is a great she is a great gal she's a great wonderful woman uh but i i could see it where you you tap out and you either have a girl that you want to get serious with or not. Mm -hmm. And you just go on and, and live your life. But, you know, the days of going to a nightclub or I am never swiping on an effing dating app. I'm never going on a dating app. Uh, th th that's over. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can understand where men just like throw in the towel. They're done. And uh, maybe they settle down. But um, that presumes there's a, a high quality woman there. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to break down on that. I've, I was I was thinking about this a few days ago about about putting something in in depth together, you know, for guys in their teens, twenties, thirties, you know, minimum to kind of at least give them a little bit of a roadmap and and 
greater depth, you know, beyond like a 10 minute video, but, um, yeah, the, 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 the chasing a tail is not a good idea. Um, I've got a, a couple of guys here in, in the waiting area. Um, I'll bring you on first, Chris. So just give me a second. Um, again, if you guys want to hop on, I'm probably going to stay on till about nine 30 Eastern standard time. So that's roughly 50 minutes. So if you have a question, click the link, join now, uh, I'll get you on young, old man, woman. I don't care. Bring your question. You want to challenge something we're talking about entirely up to you. Uh, Chris, you're up, bro. What's happening? Hey man? guys, how we doing? Good. Hey, thanks Thank for having for me again, Rich. Yeah, absolutely. Cappy, what's going on? How you feeling? Uh, Low under Getting the weather. Wild. So yeah, I, I I don't know what it is. I just I'll tell you this. I'm gonna go pick up the GF. I'm gonna go to bed early. I'm 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 gonna be <laughs> like rich. I'm just gonna get myself. I got my cheaters and my old man tea. I'm gonna have some tea and I'm gonna good go boy to here pretty soon. Out yeah. boy. Right on. Appreciate you staying with us. Uh yeah. So so right now, I mean, Rich, I was on last week and just a quick refresher. So I'm I'm two and a half months out of a um you know, about two and a half year relationship, you know, newly mm -hmm. red pilled, reading a lot of books, uh, doing the work. So I'm, I kind of find myself in sort of a crossroads or like a pick your poison sort of situation right now. So, I mean, frankly, you know, in being complete honesty, like I've got one itis, like I know it, I feel it, I'm, I'm fully aware of it. Um, so, you know, I know that the prescription for that is spinning plates, getting out there and meeting more women, getting under a different girl, right? The problem with that that I'm finding is I'm just not clicking with a lot of them or I'm not finding girls that I'm really into. I think I'd probably rate myself on a great day, seven, six and a half, somewhere in there. So definitely some mm -hmm. still some work to do and obviously attracting fives, five and a half, sixes, that sort of thing. But so I guess my question is more where is when you talk about from an ROI perspective or time best spent, is it continuing to spin plates to ward off that one itis is it better time spent not spending money going out on dates and dating these girls and just having to kind of get through the one itis what's you know as far as time best spent what what are your thoughts on that i have a question so you have one itis. so how old are you and why do you have one itis for this chick like why is she so special so i'm 20 i just turned 29 about a week ago so um yeah, so there's no reason. It, it's it's a lot of brainwashing, a lot of blue pill conditioning. Um, you know, like I said, I, I I think I mentioned last week it was betaization, thousand concessions. You see all the shitty decorations behind me that that are hers and not mine. I'm still in the relationship house or, or apartment, so to speak, until the end of this month. Um, mm. But it this was is the one that you got the dog with, right? Yeah, he's right here on the couch next to me. I'm keeping him, by the way. So mm. that's a W for for me. But so yeah, I mean. You know, I've gone. I, I'm. I can rationalize it. That's the thing that's kind of giving me trouble is I'm able to rationalize it, and I'm. I'm actually going through dangerous personalities right now, and I'm mm. just ticking off those boxes, just like, oh my, like, on right on down the line, right? But mm. it's still that feeling and that weird like pit in your stomach about she's moving and she's going to meet other guys. So I'm still in that process, I think, of detoxing. What do you think, Aaron? I got some thoughts on this. I. I understand because men are programmed to want women and that's the girl and genetic and all that. And, and so I'm being a hypocrite when I, when I provide this harsh, uh, uh, crit critique or insight. Uh, but usually people who have one, I just have nothing else going on in their life and they're using, uh, the woman, uh, and women do this too, but they're using somebody else to give them value. And Chris, I'd say, dude, man, I, you know, it, it, we've all been there. We all had like, you're in love. This is the girl, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you have got to realize there's other stuff going on in your life. And it is your job as a man to have something going on in your life that whether a woman is present or not, you don't care. And most of the one-itis I see are coming from, and you don't look at, I'm just, I'm just giving you an example, something to, to think about insight, but are like these nerdy loser like just nobody's so like i need the girl it's like well to be actually honest for women what do you bring to the table and these guys have nothing else but somebody else namely women to give them value and so i would you know it, it's hard to give up especially if you fell in love and i understand the human condition and we'll, we'll beat that out of everybody sooner or later um but do you have anything else going on like you should not wake up. Oh my God. Your first thought should not be, Oh my God, uh, uh, Amy or whatever her name is. What's Amy doing? Uh, when I wake up, my first is like, oh, I gotta get to work. 
I'm like, oh, geez, I got an ear. I got, I got something to do. Um, it is not love her to death, but it's not about my girlfriend. And so that's the, that's what I would say is, uh, you're 29, you're not that old. Uh, you, you have to have something else going on in life. And, uh, one itis is once you find your core and who you are and what you want to be, that'll go away and you will never have one itis again. Uh, but you know, I guess we all go through it, and, but that's, that's why I recommend is looking at your core and yourself and what point and purpose you have in life, uh, that is not dependent on other people. Mystic's next question, Chris. So why do you think she bounced on you? Um, I mean, a lot of it was, it's kind of what, you know, Kathy mentioned. It was, I put her on this pedestal and, and made her the central focus and, uh, didn't do a good job of drawing boundaries. And it was constantly not trying to upset her or make her unhappy, uh, trying to reason with logic. And if there were problems, you know, I think like I mentioned maybe before, every fight was the same. It was, I have a problem. Here's what it is. Let's fix it. Then the tears start coming and the crying and the victim playing and all that sort of BPD stuff. And then I would, you know, give in and make up, go to bed, that whole thing. So, just, you know, just, it was, it was you know, Chris, um, it's a rule. I don't tolerate crying. That's a childish <laughs> action. No, I'm being deadly serious. Um, yeah. You're, if, if women want to be equals and all, like, no, you will convey your thoughts using the English language. So I understand what the problem is, but there's no crying. I, I don't tolerate it. That's, that's, <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, Children cry. What would what would make you a 10, Chris? Because, I mean, you rated yourself pretty low. You know, I think I've still – so just to your point, Aaron, so, yeah, I've got some good stuff going on, right? So I'm, I'm an amateur musician. I'm, I'm going to try to get to a point. I'm in New York, so when things open up a little bit better, I'm going to get it to a point where I'm trying to play some gigs here and there or at least at the very least do some open mics. Um, I've got my very first powerlifting competition coming up this Saturday that I'm, that I'm pumped for. You know, I still think I've got about 15 or so pounds to lose or so to get to that kind of, uh, the body fat percentage where I want to be. Um, but I also, you know, I'm struggling with my job right now and I've been, I've got one and I'm thankful for it. I'm in sales, but my particular vertical is in like the sports ticketing technology. So obviously they've taken a huge hit over the last year or so, um, have been going on interviews and I've gotten to final rounds multiple times and it just hasn't kind of broken through. So there's a lot of monotony in my day to day, you know, the dog is great, but just the majority of my time is spent inside kind of, you know, doing my day to day office kind of gig. Um, so, and not to mention my biggest area of focus. And I think the biggest problem I've had in any relationship, I've been sort of serial monogamous all throughout my twenties. I had kind of three major relationships and so I would always push, you know, other relationships by the wayside, especially ones with buddies and guys and things like that. So the fact that I don't really have a, really that close knit tribe, that's something I'm really working on. So if I take a full, full inventory of everything and then, you know, I've got some debt that I really want to try to get out of and, you know, being an expensive city like New York, not making quite the sales money that I want to be making, um, you know, so okay. it's okay, all those so things kind of rolling there. along. Okay, yeah. So let me stop you there. Cause I mean, what I'm hearing is taking ownership and here's a list of things that I need to do. Right. Which is awesome. I mean, I'll never have this conversation with a woman where she'll sit down and be like, here's the 10 <laughs> things I need to do to become a better version of myself. Right. So that's great. Um, I'm talking to a blue pilled alpha, right? You're a musician, you're a power lifter, you know, you take ownership for your life. You obviously see that you have some opportunities to level up. I would not get into another monogamous relationship with a chick for a long time at this stage because if you do and you don't fix like the fucking firmware that's in your operating system you're just going to fall back into the exact same position that you're in today when you go through the process of betatization through a thousand concessions um have you read a lot of the books that i've recommended like have you read my book have you read rollo's work have you yeah, I've been through yours twice. Um, yeah. I started Rational Mail again for the second time. I read Dr. Shanti's book um, twice. I've gone through a bunch okay. of them. So it's it's like you mentioned, though, it's really drinking out of a fire hose, right? It's having to go through them yeah. a lot and really just, I mean, I'm not listening to music during the day with headphones. I'm listening to old BTTs or Rolo stuff and, and that sort of thing. So okay. I'm, I'm really trying to be a sponge and, and kind of soak it all in. It's just about applying it. Like, and I like a lot what, of what, that. What's, uh, what's a percentage of your waking hours are you spending on chasing the girls? 
Um, I spend a good amount of my day on on the apps for sure. I um, mean, yeah. that's my main that's my main you know sourcing mechanism as far as that goes. You know, I'm I'm kind of in tune with a lot of stuff that Myron talks about just because we're really close in age and he's talking about you know being in sales. I I really understand this idea of volume and a pipeline you know, with anything like whether it's what do you looking sell? for jobs like um, it's it's a sports ticketing technology to big Fortune 500 companies. What so, does that make you like? like? Does that put you in the top five percent of income earners in New York? Top no, 20? not quite. If if I was at plan, if I was doing you know my total OTE earnings base plus commission at at hundred percent plan, then yeah, um, that put me right around like one sixty one seventy for for New York. Yeah. Um, but again, my industry has been crushed this year, so I'm I'm looking for for new gigs. Uh, I'm looking to be closer to that like two hundred range all in. But it's just, you know, you can make a lot of money in sales. It's just you got to sell yeah. high ticket items, right? You got to sell totally. Shit like it's SaaS, luxury right? It's cars, software. yachts, yeah. whatever, something, right? Um, like big box software that, is what I'm into. So, look, you just have to push through the bullshit. It's, it's probably you've gone through all the material now and you've consumed it. It's just applying it, but spending less time trying to get the girls and figuring them out and more so figuring yourself out. Like, what is your purpose in life? Like, what are you supposed to be doing? Cause at 29, you're going to be 39 before you fucking know it. And then you're going to be fucking 49. You're going to be like, Holy shit. That be was 20 years. Like, us, yeah. yeah. You're going to be like us, right. Sitting here talking to some other guy at some other point. <laughs> so like get to the business of, of, of working on, you know, turning Chris into the best version of himself and less of, you know, how do I get the girls? How do I get over the one itis? You'll get over the one itis when you're spoiled for choice. Like when you see yourself on your purpose and and you're doing something of some of some impact, you're not going to be thinking about Amy or whatever the fuck her name was, right? You're going to be thinking about, well, I got a date lined up on Friday and I probably have two lined up on Saturday and I'm kind of tired, so I should probably cancel on one because my plate's full and then I'll decide what I'm going to do on Monday sort of thing, right? Like that's what a man that's spoiled for choice is going to be thinking about. She'll be a distant memory for you. And you're going to put up with a lot less crap going forward now that you know all this stuff. Because when you see, you know, the crybaby tears or the borderline personality or she brings daddy issues to the table or she's covered from head to toe in tats or some bullshit like that, like she's mutilated her body, you're just going to spin her as a plane, keep her arms like she's going to text you one day and be like, you know, I don't think this is going where I think it should be going, Chris. So we probably shouldn't see each other and just be like, all right, cool. You know, good luck with your life. And that's it. And you just move on. Or she might just come back and be like, wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a sec. Don't go anywhere yet. I want to talk to you about that. Right. And you'll be like, oh, fuck. You know, right. this chick's got a genuine desire for me. Right. She's covered from head to toe in tats and has daddy issues and three or four red flags. But she's pretty crazy. And I got nothing else going on Tuesday night. So let's bring her over. And that way, you're the man that you want to be, right? You can do what you want when you want. That's what the whole mental point of origin concept is. Cool? Absolutely. Double down, man. Just, you know, work on your thing. You'll be fine. Right on. All right, Thanks, dude. guys. See ya. See ya, Chris. Um, how you doing, Cap? You want to stick around or you want to yeah, pop off? give me off? another one. Let me, I got, I still got at least half. Look, here's the thing about being sick. You know the philosophy of being sick? Tell us. Well, you're going to you're going to feel like crap no matter where you are. So I might as well be here. I mean, I at least got half an hour before I gotta go pick up the G up. So I, if I feel Good. like crap here. I feel like crap in the car. It doesn't really matter. So nonstop. Dre's asking me how I feel <laughs> about you beating dogs. I, do, I don't beat dogs. That's I heard you yelling at dogs the other day. That was yeah, I yell at the dog. That dog was dumber. That dog needs and it did, <laughs> it did get punishment. Uh, but yes, I am not a dog beater. Uh, I am pro dog. I love dogs, uh, but dogs do need discipline. And you can ignore Dre. He's just a black guy. So Okay, got it. Uh, would enjoy calling in, but I live in a cabin in the woods. Is everyone okay? And potential bad audio and video. I want to give guys some hope potentially. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate the super. Um, I think we have a question about economics from Muhammad. Let me grab him. I, I, might, I might know a thing or two about that. Yeah, let's see if you can help him out. Got a lot of dudes in the, in the, in the waiting area tonight. It's a real sausage festival. We got any uh, ladies that are going to call in tonight? Call in tonight. Oh, hang on, Muhammad. Oh, there you go. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, hey, Muhammad. Oh, I'm. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to mute you for a sec. I'm going to mute you for a sec. You... Okay, I'm going to mute you again. Don't take yourself off mute. Listen to me. You've got something playing in the background that's recycling the audio. So turn off whatever that is, please. Whatever that is, please. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I just. Are you hearing my audio go back? Are you through hearing it? my audio go back through it? 
Yeah, I can hear you. I just, no, I but can you hear me you twice? No, but can you hear me twice? No. Yeah, I do hear you twice. Yeah, I do Muhammad hear you twice. Scott. Muhammad Scott. Hear myself twice. Hear myself twice. Okay. Muhammad, I'm going to pull you out, man. You got to fix that. Can't be doing the show like that. See if you can get that sorted out and then send me a DM. Uh, let me see who's here in the private chat. Um, let's get somebody new on. We got Kevin here. He looks like a new face. Kevin, I'm going to pull you in here. Oh, wait. No, sorry. I got Alan that was waiting longer. Alan, I'm going to pull you in. There you go. The shirtless dude. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. What's shaking? Can you hear me all right? Hey, uh, I just want to ask like a question about having a father figure. So my father's like deployed right now. My mother's taking care of me. And I want a you know, strong masculine role model to look up to, you know, while still in high school and all that. And I was wondering what I could do to um, fix that. If there's something I'm not, not sure what to do. I don't what do you need to really... fix? What's the problem? Yeah. Um, you said your dad's away just, on deployment. What's he doing? Is he model as of right now. Getting some bad guys? Yeah, he's getting some bad guys. Um, so basically, whenever my dad goes on deployment, my mom comes and stays with us, take care of us, we're separated. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you know, I just don't have a strong male role model, and I feel myself, you know, kind of slip from masculinity, stuff like that. And I was wondering if there I don't know, dude. You're I sitting do, outside but... with your shirt off. You seem like a pretty masculine dude to me, like you don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I mean... How old are you? I just you talk about it in the book. Um, I'm 17. Okay. And what are you looking for exactly? Like, you want some guy to come come over and pick you up and throw you around or beat you up or something? Like, what are you looking for? Um, no, I just I just noticed when I my father leaves, I kind of lose discipline, lack focus on um, my goals in life stuff like that and i just don't like to see myself right now okay so <laughs> I, I, he, here, here's, ahead, here's the here's the thing i look you could uh, my my role model was john mcclain okay now i was going to save terrorists or kill terrorists in nakatomi plaza and and be the hero um I, you're you're looking the wrong way for role model because I think especially most young men today are going to have to raise themselves. And it's not a role model or somebody, you know, if you want a role model, go watch the McQueen movies or, uh, you know, worship the great Lord and our savior, Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, but in the end, it's, you know, I was, I was 17 and I made a decision. I was going to be a whiny little bitch. And I was like going to go and do my own thing and make my own money. And that's what it is. And sometimes you just got to, you got to raise yourself and it's not that hard. You you'll, you'll have your own role model. You'll form your own self, uh, just merely supporting yourself and surviving. You'll, you'll get the hard school of Knox, which is going to teach you more than any role model could. But as long as you don't get a girl pregnant, don't major in stupid crap and don't commit no crimes, you'll, you'll do fine. And you'll have, and it's not, it's not that hard to figure it out. So when you get older, there might be some more esoteric, uh, existential questions like what is the point and purpose of life blah 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 but you know as a 17 year old you're a little bitch and you live with your mom okay now when you're 18 you don't live with mom okay now you're a man and that alone right there that trial and tribulation of paying your own rent and supporting yourself that's gonna give you your own uh, uh male role model uh without it being a a, a codified entity uh but I, I would recommend Bruce Willis as a role model and Ronald Reagan. Uh, Steve McQueen's pretty cool too, but no, just uh, you don't you don't need a role model. You just need to support yourself, which, which you, is coming um, at the age of eighteen. Do you do anything with like combat sports? You you know you work out at a dojo or anything oh, like that? Um, yeah, I go to UFC gym. Me and my brother do jujitsu, good Muay Thai, a bunch of martial arts and stuff like that. Good. And do I that. do have your book, Rich. Uh, halfway through it now. Pretty awesome. Good. I hope you enjoy it. Do me a do me a solid and leave a nice review on Amazon when you're done too. Um do. yeah. Just just keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't worry. The old man's gonna be back. Don't let your mom feminize you or try to enmesh you or anything like that. Just you know, just do your own thing. Keep walking around with your shirt off and you know, be the man that you want to be, all right? And ride motorcycles. Ride motorcycles. Oh. Motorcycles are dope. My dad loves right. riding motorcycles. We go uh, every weekend. Atta boy. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's see who we got here with the background. I got Rafi Ram, Rafi, Rafi, Rafi. Yeah, he's Rafi. A regular. He's a good guy. Yeah. Is he? Is he your guy? What's up, Rafi? Hello, Richie. Can you hear me? 
You're a little low. Can you, can you speak up a little bit? Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Very low. Okay, I'm quick. Hello, Richard. Nice to talk to you. Aaron, nice to talk to you. Can you hear him? Yeah, I can hear him. Yeah, I'm just turning it up. Uh, yeah, Rafi, you can yell into the microphone. Yeah, like, but I speak, hear speak really loud. Okay, my question is, in the West, do you think that marriage is actually dead now for men? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a stupid idea. Even, that's not even a, that's not even a debate. I don't know. The uh, next no question. No yeah. It's, what was that, Rafi? There's no room to maneuver at all. No, man ever get no, there's, there's, back. well, no, there's, there's room to maneuver, but never, never get married. Um, I don't, I don't know how clear that can be. There's no advantage at all there is only disadvantage to getting married and i'm generally a pro nuclear family guy um yeah. you know like yeah men and women should be together but uh the the way the laws are at least in in the west uh in the united states at least speaking um there is no benefit to a man getting married and you can get everything you want out of marriage by not getting married so it, it's it's a uh, it's it's like, should I take a hammer and smash my toe? No, you shouldn't. Should I shoot my dick off? No, you shouldn't. Should I get married? No, you shouldn't. It's it's not even. It's such a laughable joke. That that's what I. It's I, I guess. it's utterly it's utterly freaking absurd, dude. Like, I Thank have a you, chapter in my book about why smart men don't marry. Have you read my book? Yes, I have. I read your book. It's a very good book. Yeah, read that chapter again and again and again because everybody has an idealistic notion of marriage still. A lot of guys are still romantically over-invested in the idea of finding the one and she's going to support it, you know, his mission and be by his side and give him access to reliable sex that's going to be crazy for the rest of his life and you know, bear him beautiful children that will be obedient and never spaz out or end up in the back of a cop car it's it doesn't work like that man like there's a lot of work that needs to go down um i've said this before i'm planning on on putting out a course this year because i get this question so often how do i one get a long-term relationship and two how do i find good wife stock and it's really hard and it's a lot more work than what you think i'm going to lay out all the cheat codes that i have on this and i'm just going to put it all in a course so look for that in the future but um there's really a lot to unpack with this did you have a second question i think in the uh private chat you said you had a follow-up to it uh, well, I want to, uh, the rules also apply to cohabitation as well when it comes to cohabitation we also believe that many you should not be cohabitating with a chick unless unless you're going to be with her on a long-term basis more specifically to have kids how old are you i'm 38 at the moment 38 yeah 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 okay but I, i've been with somebody for quite a while now and we get married at some point but i'm very cautious about it what do you think aaron I'm not against it. I mean, he's 38. I mean, it's everybody's life, but, um, you know, I'm, I don't, I, I think I'm me, Ryan stone and Rolo. I think we're kind of the, you know, a lot of uh, people give us, you know, Oh, you got a girl, you're married. Uh, essentially. I'm, I'm not against women. I'm not against, uh, finding the right gal. And, and Rafi, if you, if you got a gal you've been with for quite some time, I, I assume unless you're, you know, she's mean and you, you have no self-respect, I, I think maybe things are working out well. Um, so I'm not against uh, uh, it, having a, a, a long-term relationship, but God, oh Christ, money, don't get married. There's just no damn reason for it. None. Are you looking to have kids? Is that what you're driving at? Yes, yes, because I'm getting older now, and I hope to get, uh, I'll maybe have one son. But um, How old's your girlfriend? She's 31 at the moment. She's how old? 31? Yeah. Okay. So... You don't need to get married to have kids. I mean, if that's what you want to do, if you want to have a son, just make sure she's a, you know, she's going to be a good mother and you're not wifing up somebody that's going to be a train wreck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know what, what they really like until you actually marry them, I think. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they always say the woman you divorce is never the same woman that you marry and women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. So, I mean, five years time from now, she she could be a totally different person, right? You know, depending on how things go in that relationship. That's why it's really important to manage the frame of a relationship in an LTR, especially if you're living with her. Look at Aaron. He doesn't take any crying whatsoever. No, I don't. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but you know, it's like, no, 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 no. Use words, use words. So let's... All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Rafi. Good to see you.
Uh, got a super here from Elijah. He says, dating advice for 20s. I have a girl wanting a long-term relationship. I'm 20, own apartment, working in plants and moving into real estate. Plan to flip houses. What do I always say? Don't get into a long-term relationship in your 20s. What do people do? Hey, Rich, should I get into a long-term relationship? I'm 20. You have the answer. Don't do it. Um, Ben, I'm going to pull you in. I think I've seen you waiting there for a bit. Let's see how your audio I got, is. I got one more, and then I, I got to go because I'm feeling horrible. Right All right, now. no problem. So, not not to offend Ben, but hey, Ben, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing, Cappy? Sorry if my audio is bad. I live out in what we would call the sticks in southern uh, Texas. No, so. you're good, man. Loud and okay. clear. Fire away with your question. Uh, it's not really a question. Um, I want to give men some hope. <laughs> All right, let's hear about the hope. Um, <clears throat> but they need to wait. I'm 38. I've been married before. I was married for eight years. Was engaged before. Um, that engagement ended because of her family. But there are some good women out there, and maybe I'm biased because I live in a very red area. In terms of politics, but there there's some good women out there. Yeah, we're not saying that there aren't. It's it's just that you're going to have to dig through a lot of dirt to find gold, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, like I said, I'm 38, and it took me 38 years to find somebody that was what I would consider halfway decent. How long have you been dating her? Uh, about five months now. Yeah. So, I mean, like you're still in the early stages, the honeymoon phases. I mean, there's going to be stuff that's going to pop up at some point when you apply some serious stress to the relationship. I think that uh, Sean Smith always used to say, you know, you want to you want to give it about 18 months before you really want to try to evaluate her for anything on a long term basis. I think it's still reasonable advice. Um, So don't get too excited at five months. If at five years you can say this exact same thing. Good. I agree with you. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I totally agree. I know I follow Cappy. I follow you as well. Um, both give great advice. I just want guys to be like, hey, it's cool. Just chill out in our 20s and our 30s. Like I said, I'm 38, and it took me that long. Um, don't give up hope, guys. <laughs> That's all I want to say. I always, I always say leave a line out there because there's nothing. I mean, you find the right gal. I mean, yeah, you're going to your life is going to be a lot better off without uh, with her than without her. Yeah. Um, but I just, uh, the, the programming, like uh, Chris, the previous caller, his entire life was not, I shouldn't say that or accuse him of that, but because he has one itis, it's all about the woman. It's all about the girl. It's like, no, you have to go and live your own life and leave a line out there. I've, I've, uh, I've dated uh, a handful because they're rare, but there were some good gals and I didn't realize sometimes what I had. Uh, at that point in time and thankfully i wised up and, and appreciated the girl that i did get um but yeah there there are girls out there and, and not to you know i think that's maybe a risk we run here in the red pill community is like oh they're all there rah, 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 they're all bad mm. it's like no there's there's some it, it can happen it can happen but not likely yeah, i got a book on numbers about it i don't know i just the numbers are really low but which only brings up their value. Like if you find a good gal, it's just all that much more valuable if you can find that one gal. So one of the things that I would, that I'll often tell guys, Ben, and I want to, you know, I want to recite it with you is, is, is this chick cannot be put on a pedestal. Like she can't think for a moment that she's irreplaceable, that she can only ever be your only source of intimacy and attention and love or anything like that without explicitly stating that, right? I mean, you have to kind of demonstrate it through your actions and your choices and the way you go about your life because she wants to fight for you, right? I mean, like she wants to be in your frame. She wants to know that she's with the best that she can get. And as soon as she starts, the moment a woman wakes up and and thinks, I got this guy wrapped around my finger, you're fucked. Well, she, she'll she find someone else. That's, yeah. that's what will happen. All right, Ben. Anyway, Thanks, man. Hey, appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great night. Good to see you, Ben. All right, Aaron. You yeah, sound Rich, like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dying, man. Yeah, I'm, I was going to say I'm, you sound like you're about done. I'm, so, I'm, <laughs> okay, guys. Um, before Aaron goes, grab his book. It's it's on Amazon. I'll have it pinned below in the top comment when I get off the cast. I've dropped it in the chat. I'll I'll drop it again before the end of the show. Book of Numbers is a great read. It's a quick one. You can burn through it in a day. Um, thanks for joining me, Aaron. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Rich, and thanks for plugging me. I I really appreciate it.
Yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Um, I'll do a couple more, uh, about maybe another 20 minutes, and uh, and then we'll wrap up, and I'm going to head over to my Q&A. Thanks, Aaron. All right, see you, Chief. Let me see what I got here in the private chat here from you guys. Uh, got some questions, questions. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yes, I will not put on the same people every week. Don't worry. Relax. Uh, I got a Renji, Renji Lee. I'm going to bring you in, Renji. Awesome. All right. How you doing, man? Very good to finally meet you. I can't believe I'm on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, just had a little quick question about um, like the idea of dependency. So um, besides, you know, besides I'm right now I'm single, but uh, besides this woman who I definitely had one itis for at one point, I also have to take care of my, uh, my parents who have like a bit of a medical condition. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, you know, what would you recommend for a single man in his twenties who's also got other baggage, especially from like an Asian culture um, having, respect for your parents, taking care of them is really important. So I uh, just wanted to get your opinion on that. Thanks. You're sorry. You're asking if it's okay to be taking care of your parents. Like in what context are we dealing with? Well, like, uh, as in like palliative care. And, um, the, I guess my question is more of like, how can you manage having decent relationships or hookups with women while at the same time having this long-term baggage that you have? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you live with them full time. Sorry? And I'm assuming that you live with them full time? Uh, yeah, I actually, I bought the house and uh, I have my, one of my parents living with me. Do you have like uh, private quarters in the house, like a West Wing or something? I mean, I'm just exaggerating, but I mean like- Basement, yeah, bedroom, yeah. yeah, basement, kind of. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean like you can still run some game there. It's just, you know, you're always going to have that overarching, you know, well, my mom lives upstairs or my dad lives upstairs or whatever because I take care of them. Um, it's it's going to be- I mean, a lot of women will look at it as like a detriment. It's not going to be like, oh, you've got, you know, three kids and you're divorced or anything like that. But it's, you know, it's going to be a liability. Like women are solipsistic. They have a hard time seeing past their own nose. So you're going to be passed on by some of them just, you know, just because of that scenario. Who cares? You know, there's 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 some decent chicks out there that'll look at it like, oh, that's sweet sort of thing, you know. So mm -hmm. I would just I would just keep doing what you're doing. Like who like who really cares what these women think is what it boils down to at the end of the day you do you you make yourself your own mental point of origin if you want to take care of your folks you do that right most definitely it's very important to me i have one more question do you mind yeah go ahead um basically there was this girl i had one itis for and um honestly i, I did believe that she was the one i thought that she was uh like the soulmate kind of situation mm -hmm. um in the end uh it something didn't work out where her parents wouldn't agree with my race or culture and mm -hmm. so therefore like think about like israel and palestine like two cultures that traditionally don't get along yeah, um, yeah and because of that situation we definitely split apart um just wanted to ask how do how does one person move on past the things that we cannot control thanks um i think the best way to handle that if i'm being honest is is there's going to be oil and water scenarios when you're out there dating all the time, you know, because of cultural reasons, uh, race, religion, whatever. Um, you should kind of look for that when you're getting into it. Like one of the things that I started doing um, at some point was I started to realize, I mean, if I want to have an LTR, I don't want to get involved with a chick that's a firstborn. Uh, I'm a firstborn. I married a firstborn. I'm very familiar with birth order. I've read Dr. Kevin Lehman's books on birth order and how it affects um it's it's something worth looking at, you know, if you're interested in that level of uh, psychology, because firstborns will always do better with lastborns on a on a long term basis. Ideally, for me, I would I would look for a chick that's a lastborn that's got older brothers that are that are strong, masculine, you know, virtuous kind of dudes, and she's got a good relationship with her father, right? So you want to get clear on that. I mean, if you're Israeli, you probably don't want to date a, a Palestinian if there's going to be conflict between your family, sort of thing. So you kind of plan from that from the get go. So you don't have to deal with, you know, the extra layer of like when I tell guys to avoid dating single moms because women without children are better and then women lose their shit. Ah, it's, it's like, OK, well, there's like, where is the lie, you know, within that? It's like you're inviting extra layer of drama and extra layer of complexity into your life as a man. It's the same sort of thing if you're going to invite a woman in your life that that comes from a, a conflicting cultural background or a conflicting religious background. Can you do it? Yeah, you can date a single mom, but you're going to have extra layers of complexity in your life. It's the same thing if you date somebody that's, that's, that's going to do that because of cultural conflicts or whatever, right? Makes sense? Um, makes 100% sense. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, the idea of 
uh, traditional women. I think like, I rarely see that these days. Um, I'm young, you know, I'm mid twenties. I get out, I'm, you know, in the city of Toronto. So like, I do see a lot of people, but the whole idea of traditionalism is gone. And I, it's kind of sad. Like all the people that I think like are good choices for marriage are yeah. not there. So like, what do you, what are your thoughts on traditionalism or marriage? Um, yeah. So let's make this the last question. So Thank you. marriage is stupid, obviously. I mean, I've talked about it. I don't know if you've read my book. Have you gone through it? I haven't. I have the audio book, but uh, I only got the first chapter, like the red flags one. Oh, okay. Um, the audio book will be out probably by the spring. It, it should be out soon, but if you don't want to wait for it, I've got a chapter in, in the print book on marriage and why it's a bad idea for men. It would take me way too long to explain it, but I'll leave that at that. But in Toronto, like I get it because I live here. I've, I've, I've dated in the city. It's, it's basically a, a liberal shithole now. Um, you, you know, like a lot of women, when you meet them, they're, they're very, uh, like toxic feminism in my view makes women anti-femininity, right? Like they're not feminine anymore. Yeah. They don't want to look feminine. They don't want to take on conventional feminine roles. They don't want to support your purpose. Um, and they just bring like these bad, nasty attitudes. Um, if I was a young guy that had the ability to maneuver, I know you're looking after your parents, I would leave the city. You probably don't have that option because you're taking care of family. So you're just going to have to dig through a lot of dirt, right? I mean, you're going to go through a lot of dirt and you're going to, you know, spin the plates and you're going to date them and you're going to be like, all right, this one's not a good use of my time. You know, this one just took off on her own. You know, this one's, I'm just not going to, you know, I'm just going to ghost harass or whatever. It's like you just kind of go through all the motions and you're going to find yourself, you're probably going to find yourself, you know, going through the stats that Aaron did, you know, with the book of numbers and, and, and realize that it's not a good use of your time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that much focus on it. You know, if I'm being honest with you, I would, I would do your thing, you know, build your business, find out, you know, what your purpose in life, if you haven't find it and, and, and do that and date, like, I'm not saying don't date, but if you happen to find a chick that, that, is a good fit, then explore that. But in the meantime, just focus on yourself first and let it happen if it happens. How old are you? 26. Oh, dude, you got, you shouldn't even be thinking of marriage right now. <laughs> like, like start, start to look at like, you know, if you want to have kids 32, 33, maybe 35, this is not nothing that you want to think about right now. Awesome. It shouldn't even be on the radar screen. I just wanted to say big fan of the show. Thank you for doing what you do. Um, the amount of value you provide is very great for a lot of us men. I'm sure we all appreciate you. And because of this, I'm actually looking to do a private session with you. So thank cool. you for having me. Have a good night. All right. sir. Thanks, Cheers. brother. See uh, let me grab this super chat. By the way, guys, if you disagree, feel free to click the join link and hop on the show and disagree with me live. And let's see what you got. Uh, Alexander says, Rich, I'm 24, six for six LTR with a seven for three years and two years living together. She's little to no drama, uh, knows I want, I don't want to get married in the future in my frame, your thoughts from experience. Um, what's the question in that? It sounds like, uh, you're 20. Well, what are you doing with a long-term relationship at 24? Um, I'll tell you this at, tw at, at, at 34, at, at 44, you're going to regret wasting your twenties with one chick. That's a seven. Um, that's my thoughts on that experience. I'll, I'll, you know, leave it at that. Uh, Al Smith says, yo, Rich, does a woman pay attention to what kind of car you drive? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's going through her head when she looks at what you drive? Is it a factor? Women are weird when it comes to cars. Um, I'll tell you this. So I said this a number of years ago when I was driving BMW M cars, I've had an M3, I've had two M3s actually, I've had an M5 and they can't tell the difference between an M5 and a, and a basic bitch five series. They can't, it, it, you know, as long as they see the BMW roundel on the steering wheel and on the hood. Um, yeah. You know, the M5 looks a little bit different in her eyes, but it's not like we see it as men. Like we see a, a 700 horsepower tuned car on big 21 inch wheels and big fat exhaust tips. They don't see that. They just see the badge and like, oh, that's a German car. It costs a lot of money. He has financial resources. I like him better than the Hyundai guy. That's that's how they look at it in my view. Um, let's see here. I'll do one more question. I got like 10 minutes and then I'm doing Q and a for my community. So, uh, let's see here, Muhammad, I haven't pulled you on yet. You're, you've been waiting a while. So here you go, bro. Just unmute yourself. Uh, hello. You can me correct. Yep. What's shaking? Nothing. Uh, so I'm actually 17 years old and, uh, I just, I just came out of the whole toxic black pill community thing. 
that my okay. phone took me in. And uh, I found you through them, actually. So they're actually helping you. But I'm just uh, so I'm about to an 18. And about Hang on a second. You found me through a black pill community because they usually don't yeah. don't speak well of me. So are they talking shit about me or are they speaking about watching my stuff? Uh, they talk shit about you constantly. And of course. Yeah. They say, yeah. And See, uh, they I always laugh because I'm like, you know, they're doing free marketing for me. So keep talking shit about me because you send guys like this over to me. I mean, I mean, like, it's true, though. It is. But anyways, I just don't like to give them any attention because I left them. But uh, so I'm up to an 18 and I had no experience with any woman at all. I don't have any money right now. Uh, I actually got fired for my last when well, I fired, but laid off because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I did, and my grades, they're not that good. They're like C, they're like C average right now. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't know what I can really do because, like, I can't, like, I, you know, like, I'm kind of stuck. And I don't okay, really well, know. I mean, like, the first thing is, is you can't really formulate the question that you want to ask. So um, let's start with this. So you're 17, 18, you said? Uh, 17 right now, but I'll turn 18 in about a month. Okay. And when you talk to your folks about this, like, let's say you talk to your dad, what does he say? Uh, he just tells me that, he tells me that I should just, try my best this last semester to try to try to get like a B average so I can, so I have options. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you this question. So what you, so what sent you into the black pill? Like, why did you enter that community? Uh, I was talking to a lot. Of, uh, I was talking to my crush at a time. It was in, mm -hmm. it was in sophomore year and I was talking to my crush and uh, she pretty much never talked me back and she always stayed with the asshole guys and I didn't understand why. And my friend was mm. also black pill at the time and he's in the same grade as me and he's still in the black pill. And mm. he pretty much brought me to the whole community and that's how I was in the black pill community. Yeah. So, I mean, like you've got a bit of loser stink around you from that community still. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's bound to happen, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, if you hang around with, with, with five people that like sulk and whine about life all day long, you're going to be the sixth. So you've just left that now. Right. So now you've, so now you're looking to level up. School yeah. doesn't matter that much. Like I know to, to, to some families and to some cultures, school is very important. School in my view, doesn't matter that much because you're a man and the way they teach boys and men specifically in the school system, it's not useful to you, right? Like men need to get out and do shit. Um, so I know that you're probably getting pressure to get good grades and all that stuff and that matters. Okay, fine, hear that. But at the end of the day, and you know, the long story short, I was a C average student at best, okay? Um, the the, the um, uh, teacher that I had in grade eight stuck me in the vice principal's office for a week. I had my desk in the vice principal's office for a week. And they were basically telling me that you're a fucking idiot. You're never going to go anywhere in life if you don't get your stuff together and learn how to focus and get good grades. And, you know, here I am making millions of dollars at, you know, the age of 30 running my own business. So, um, you know, that was like obviously 17, 18 years ago. So grades don't matter that much. So let me tell you that to, to, to start with. As far as leveling yourself up, yeah, there's work that you got to do in yourself. I mean, if you look at your image, you know, guys would tell you in the chat right now, you know, clean yourself up, get some style like the uh, Christmas sweater with the trees on it. That's got to go. You know, you got to fix the haircut and get a look right. You know, you got to you got to get that style going for yourself and, and build that confidence. Of course, you want to be with women. You're a guy. Why wouldn't you want to be with women? Why wouldn't you want to talk to women? Why wouldn't you want to have them reciprocate? Why wouldn't you want to be intimate with them? You're a guy. It's only natural. That's why you're here on the planet to scatter seed. The problem is, is that you've probably heard the just be yourself narrative, right? I mean, you said something about, you know, just trying, I think is what your dad said, like just trying, you know, trying your best. Mm -hmm. He said, if he said that I should just try it my best to at least get like an 85 average. Okay. Well, tr trying your best, well, 85 average is a pretty high average. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it that's, is. that's 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 like right up there. That's like right in the world, you know, like in the world class category. OK, so, you know, he's setting a, a fairly high standard. You just have to level up in all areas of your life. I mean, you can grab my book on Kindle at seven bucks. You know, it's about as cheap as you can get it. And I, and I and I break down everything that you need to know. I mean, if you're looking, you know, to interact with women, there's there's chapters in there that, that cover the dynamics of what works and what doesn't work and what area of work you're going to need to do, you know, for yourself. But 
hey, listen, man, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching this. And I'm glad that you abandoned, you know, the loser talk. And you're at least somewhere where people talk about doing some work on yourself because that's what is required of men, you know, to get something out of their lives is to double down on themselves, do some work and level up. It's incumbent yeah, on you. Yeah, that is true. I just have a like my main question. And this is like the only question because I don't want to hold you from the uh, Q&A, of course. But my main question is that right now, basically, as like a about to be 18 year old that has no money and that can't get a job right now. What should be my number one priority to actually level up in my progress to become like an actual successful man? Well, looks, money, status. Those are the three main things. And you're not at the top of your game on any of that. Right. Like on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the absolute best version that you could be and one being the worst, where would you rate yourself right now? Uh, one. Okay. So you got lots of, lots of work to do in, in those three areas. What do you want to focus on? doesn't matter to me. Just start, start by doing some pushups every day. You know, if your cardio sucks and go for long walks, run, you know, if your style's not good, which it does need improvement, you know, work on that, you know, have a look, right? Like, you're a black man, find a black guy that looks like you and then follow the style or look that, you know, that can work for your face shape, you know, for your hair, for your, for your physique and all that. Right. And then you just keep doubling down on that until you look in the mirror one day and you just get out of the shower and you're like, I'm a sexy bitch. I'd hit that. Right. That's, that's when you're the 10. So you have to do all that work to get to that though, unfortunately, because we're guys, you know, women just have to get up in the morning and look pretty. Men have the burden of performance, looks, money, status. That's what that's what women want. And when you do those things, you'll be beating you know you'll be beating these women off you with a stick. Guy man, uh, I appreciate you so much. I'm gonna leave. I'm just right. leaving with like one last quote, basically. Go. Uh, basically, okay. Uh, it's uh, you is you can't spell woman without man, but you can spell man without woman. And right. I think that's like one of the greatest quotes that I've ever heard because it's true. But I appreciate you. Take All care. Right. Thanks, man. See ya. That sounds like something that was picked up from the black pill community. <laughs> it's true, though. Um, let's see here. We've got uh, a Knight of Camelot became a YouTube member. Welcome, son. What is up? We got Chris. Start looking into trade work, graduate, and pursue excellence in that trade. Um, trade trade work is one way to go. That's not necessarily the way to go. Um, you can make some good money in the trade still. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't um I wouldn't discount it. It's just that there's a lot to look at. And at 18, you don't really like the dude's a one out of ten. He's rating himself right now a one out of ten. He's got a lot of work that he can do. He's got a lot of work. Um Ricky B says, get a license and learn to drive professionally, working your way up to CDL. Low cost of entry and experience increases your earning potential. Yeah, you can make a lot of money doing that. I know a few guys that are in that. Um We've had a good show, guys. It's been uh, 90 minutes, so I'm going to wrap her up on that note. I'm going to head over to um, Zoom and run my private community call. So if you're on the YouTube membership at the second tier or higher, uh, there's a Zoom link already on the community tab. You'll be able to see. You can click that and join through. Um, you can join us tonight. I'll probably be on for another 90 minutes doing some private Q&A there for the group. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Before I go real quick over my shoulder, I've got the channel sponsor, which I always must shout out to, Tactical Soap, Grandike Soap Company. Below, you go to coopersoap.com. Um, I'll leave the link in the um, pin top description with Aaron's book. Uh, if you want to get into the um, other stuff over there, like my own personal community or books that I recommend or grab my book, it'll all be there. But you guys are showering anyway, so considering uh, you know grabbing some tactical soap or beard oil if you're a, a gentleman with a nice beard, it's always uh, great to get some, some support for the guys that help run uh, these shows. Um, hang on, I missed a couple of super chats here. Let me grab a few of these before I go real quick. Uh, Chris said, forgot to mention I signed up for your community. Uh, Rich, just waiting for approval on the Facebook group. I'll get you in there ASAP, Chris. Uh, let me just... Um, get off the show and I'll get you approved. And then you can hop onto the Q and a afterwards if you want to. So thanks for that. Uh, do, do, do. Got it all. Okay. Let's wrap it up on that note. Thanks for watching guys. Grab Aaron's book. He's a good guy. He's got some really good books on uh, Amazon. Uh, he's an author that I'll always recommend. So check it out. If you want to get into the book of numbers, it really just shows you how low the ROI is on chasing women. So you'll get it when you get it. 
We'll see you guys in the next cast. We'll be back next Monday. I'm, I'm going to be doing call-in Q&As always at the end of every show now. So if you have a question that comes up during the week, you want to ask a question, young, old, man, woman, please come on the show, ask the question live. Um, yeah, let's get into it. We'll see you guys in the next